Time magazine at that time, you read every sort of magazine, you know. The best of all at that time is an Esquire. It's all about styles, you know. <laughs> so you were living tight at that time. And, and there are many things. That was very important at that time. Um, also, um, the curricula in, in schools, because he wants to know how to lead the new people. Those days, schools are only morning school, just like any other good school. And in the afternoon, you got to enter into sports or extra curriculums, and that is the most important thing. I always want to be different for some reason in my, you know, I don't want to play football because the other play football. In any case, I'm not very good at that. So I play tennis. I'll take tennis. And to buy tennis, I could pay for six months to buy it. And at that time, it's $15, but it's a lot of money. And even in cadets, you know, we are supposed to join in either scouts or whatever it is. I choose to go to Air Force has a different thing altogether. That's where I met one of my colleagues at the time, was uh, Dato Sulaiman Suja, who became the first squadron leader and then became the Air Marshal of Malaysia. We were together at the time. And this is some of my you know, comrades and my colleagues at the time. So the important thing is you have a lot of extra curriculum, but not only that. You know, uh, every, not only, I don't see everything, you know. I was educated in cinemas as well. Every time you have a fortune or got money, you go to cinemas. And you learn something too. You know, you learn, you learn what you want to learn, I suppose. I mean, I know that some films like, like uh, Citizen uh, Kane, for example, you know, it give a long impression. So there are education everywhere in that sense. But the biggest thing is, in Singapore they have UCIS. UCIS is United States Information Service and they have a fantastic library. Manly Magazine, <coughs> you got all the best magazine. At the time, mechanics, science, things like that. That's where you browse through. And there are books too. And I started reading books. Earlier period there was books on great architects as well, even at that time. But just before that, in school, especially in Raffles, everybody is really, not only trying to be very competitive, really competitive. And everybody wants to be somebody and so on. And we always talk among ourselves what you want to become. I don't know that at that time everybody wants to be the same thing, other doctors, engineers, um, lawyers and so on. And I said, is it only that? There's no other thing, teachers and so on. That's because perhaps you don't have the guidance at that time, perhaps what I do. In any case, I've been trying to focus myself what I'm going to be. This is about form two, uh, you know, second year, third year in secondary school. So I started to find out myself what I really keen and what I want to do. And here, most of my friends, you know, they are very good in maths, they good in science, physics, so they came up to become doctors and lawyers and so on. But none of that, you know, skill. Then I find myself my skill is drawing, art. And I like to see things, things being done, you know. Uh, and we used to make our own house, my father's, you know, squatter house at that time. I could help him to build a house, several houses, they do. So I began to be interested in building. And that's how I tried to find out what is arts and buildings? And that's architecture. And United States Information Service Library gave me all the information about that. That's where I found Frank was right for the first time, because everybody had the same impression of the falling water. I said, what a fantastic thing. How can human beings get to think like that? I think it's not only me. Everybody, when they look at it, they fall over. And then you become more and more passionate about it. That 
that you really want to become an architect. From then on, it's nothing else. Apart from hobby, apart from other things, of course. Yes, I completed in 1955. At that time, they called it Senior Cambridge. That is during that time in 1955, they shifted over the education system. They put another level up. They call it Higher School Certificate. I couldn't get in there. It's so competitive, and the number is so small. I just couldn't get under there. Let alone go to university. And University of Malaya in Singapore was just beginning, starting on two years after that. So it's very complicated. The whole of Malaysia is trying to go there. So what you do, you work, whatever you can get. So that's 1955, start to, to go work. But before I went to work, I take about two months to visit Indonesia from Tanjung Prio in Jakarta right to Bali. And probably one of the earliest, what they call, you know, backpack, backpack. backpack. Oh. <laughs> probably the earliest, going into steamboat, going to all kind of things, you know. But you see the whole length of, of Indonesia. And of course, Bali is impressions. Really there. There's only one hotel there because I don't stay in hotel, I stay with a friend. And somebody said, when you come from Singapore, where do you stay? I don't have where to stay. Oh, stay with me. Yes, a friend. And this is what the beginning of your education in a way, you know, you, you open up yourself and it's very interesting. One of the impressionable things I can see in Bali, of course, uh, the culture, fantastic culture everywhere else. I don't know very much of a history. I stay in in a place called Singaraja, I think, somewhere else, and they have pond that else, but it's up the river. And when it's time to have a bath, that means you go into the river. Of course, which, you know, my friend has to go to the river, and there on the other side, women, all bare-breasted, and that's the first thing that, oh, do I see this? <laughs> you know, you're just a teenage, you know. <laughs> Can you imagine that? So that is the first kind of impression you get about a different kind of society. What is just something very rich in culture. Then when I went back to Singapore, I tried to go to enter um, a university in what is the name of the university in Bandung? Bandung Technology. Because oh, I heard that. I, I, I couldn't get in, of course. It's only English educated in one different thing altogether. I couldn't get in. ITB is, of course, uh, President Sukarno, who was an uh, architect and came from ITB too. He never go overseas. Um, so I went back, got to work, worked in the government department for a while, which is quite good, you know. You have the experience. And at that time, because you are senior Cambridge students and so on, and you get a position, they call it higher civil service. They're training you to take position of the second round, second round officers. The first round are all the graduates, of course. And because of that, they put you into every department, government department, from immigration, from health department, and so on. Now you learn something too. In every department, different way of looking at things. Uh, the whole system. So the whole of my life is education, education, and different kind of education. But my burning ambition is still there. I want to become an architect. There's no school of architecture in Singapore. Not what you do. I found out later uh, the RIBA, the Royal Institute of British Architects, do have a program to for external examination only at intermediate level. So I inquire about that, how to do that, and I prepare for that. The first preparation was three things I do. Although I work during the day, I went to school at night to get my HSC, high school certificate. I went to art school every 
once a week. And then I took correspondence school in architecture. That helped me tremendously. Because it is more or less what you mean in school about architecture. They give you how to you know, design this and uh, history of architecture mainly. And that's what it is. And I work with Singapore Improvement Trust as a draftsman. So during that time, all the officers are European, English, whatever. No Asian at all. But they are very good tutoring me and teaching me how to, to do things and so on. And there was as an apprentice and then self-education at that time. When, a, when an advertisement came for a scholarship, I just entered, not hoping to get it. There were 80 people to, to get this scholarship called architecture, architects. I said, no way, my grade is not as good. And then it filtered up to 23. I can remember from 80 to 33. And then three. I said, my God, what is this? Can't be. I said, I can. Because it's so competitive. And lastly, I got it. I couldn't do it. Really. You know, it's just mind boggling. You can't believe it. And only later on I asked, how come they chose me? And they said, very simple, they said, you have better knowledge than all the other candidates. I asked you about the history of architecture on Egypt, you answer. And you have prepared and drawing, I got a short portfolio of my drawing. And so on. And they said, you are there, you, you, you are really prepared yourself. And indeed, that helped. So I won what we call a Colombo Plan Scholarship sponsored by Australian government through to Singapore government with an attachment that when I took this scholarship, I got to come and serve the government for five years. Of course, I graduated already a child for And that is my first real education. I won't bore you with all the detail, we can make a long story. Everything is really touching, everything is different. Of course, you go to another country, you know, completely, you got problems, you know, uh, in a way to adapt. But you do, you do adapt in some way. And I went to Edward University first, well, and after that I changed to Melbourne University. For two reasons, A is that I cannot come along with a particular head and also particular lecturer. Tell me more about it. So if you're rebellious, don't worry about it. <laughs> so I was rebellious. And I'll tell you why I was really rebellious. Then I went to Melbourne University to take two degrees simultaneously. One is to finish the architecture, and the next thing is to, uh, the next one is to get my planning degree. So I'm a town planner. Even. That stood well when I came back as a town planner. So that's how it is. But the most important thing about my education in, in Australia is just not education, formal education. It's more than that, that I have achieved. And this is very important. It's all depend on one person or on yourself, you know, how you can guide yourself in a way. I was inquisitive, I want to know more, and I want to do everything. And it is in there, in a way, I have wholesome education in many ways. I look at my religion again, I question my religion. I went to churches, but not so much a temple, there is no temple. And I found myself in the mosque. I became secretary of the Islamic society and that kind of thing. You know, you've got to find yourself. I play tennis. I even drink. Liquors, start drinking liquors, there's a good side and bad side of sugar, of course. You have to try. <laughs> yeah. And one, one of the episodes I can tell you I'll try about this drinking business is <laughs> after the exam, <clears throat> final exam, we have to celebrate. So they say, we go to the pub. 
So there were 24 hours in my year, there was only 24. So I was the third one sitting on the long bar. So they started drinking beer. First, second. And then to the third one, they said, it's your shout. Well, what do you mean, shout? <laughs> I thought it's shout. Shout means it's you right. to pay. <laughs> what? You mean I got to stay here 24? Got 24 of us. Yes, that's the tradition. I say I'll pay after that I go. <laughs> that's part of it. But beside that, I learned how to uh, appreciate classical music. Never in my life. You know, you come from Kampong. Music, nothing. You know, you learn many things. And that's what I'm saying is, is a great opener. Now, in one thing that's about being rebellious. One of the book again that's changed my life in a way or disturbed me is Anne Rand's book called The Fountain Hill. That's a story of Frank O'Brien's actually, only later. He gave me great things in there. Honesty, integrity, belief in yourself, question everything. And that's what it is. And you know, in, in, in classes, you know, when you do your... I was very good in, in school, in universities, you know, for the first three years. Distinction, top mark in every subject except science, things like that, which is not important, I think. <laughs> anyway, but it's, it's always that. But I have problem. Um, problem in a way that I think differently already when you, you give a design program. And one of these uh, lecturers said, no, you can't think like that. This is this, this is this. Then I think to myself, do I have to please him? If I do that, then I follow his philosophy, his ideas. But surely, he should allow me to have my ideas. Of course, I didn't get good marks after that, for that. And this is why I said I changed the university. I just couldn't do that. It seemed to be I'm fighting, you know, and that's where. But I won't tell you to do the same thing as I do. <coughs> Just finish your course, then you can think about it. Just please anybody you want. <laughs> In a way, it's like your school days, you know. You have curriculum to pass, otherwise you can't go to university. The university is the same thing, it's just another level. You don't pass, you can't practice. But when after that, that is important. As long as you hold back all the time, don't let it go. Uh, this is the same thing. You know, there are many things like that. I mean, you are talking about my education, that is part of education. But education is holistic thing, embracing everything else, you know, not just formal education. Meeting people is an education. How to get along with people is education. You know? This is part of education. And that, to me, it is important. So that's my early life. It is a checkered kind of uh, educational background. But if you have the ambition, if you really have the target, you can be there. You will be there. You must have that power of knowing yourself and wanting it so badly that we will be there. So it is during that time I questioned everything about religion, about, about architecture, what is. And I do not know where to go. Because in, in the class, they teach you the way they want to teach you. And in, in a way, depending on the influence of the lecturers and on who they are, who they believe, but I said, when you think of it, I said, it's not appropriate for my country. But I said, okay, hold on, just do what they said, finish it, and later on think, rethink about it. And which I did. And I was lucky in a way, although you cannot practice the way that you want it, but you've been thinking about it all the time. What is it? Architecture for Malaysia. What is important 